times are wonderful. Like we all know, we buy. We buy beautiful things for our houses. We buy beautiful clothes and jewelry. And um, they have fallen on a little bit of hard times. And so my grandfather says, well, we're, we're going to come up with a new business. So he goes to Westwood, buys a piece of property with my grandmother, with our grandmother's jewelry. She handed him a packet of jewelry and said, here, darling, go save us. And oh, she no. did. Oh, well, no. It, so that's oh, a very no. nice to hear. Don't the jewel. <laughs> Never Don't sell. Sell the jewel. <laughs> well, in the team of our family and everybody is um, reevaluating how to live life, sometimes you come up with creative ways. So our grandmother did that. And so my grandfather said, what are we going to do? It's a depression. Um, the oil business in, in, in his area wasn't working right. And so he, he said, I'm going to buy things, material things. And so he went home, and they had a big house down by USC. They had a big, big house near the Doheny's and a big house down there. And he, he cherry-picked. He literally took this table and that chair and that painting and all different things and put them in this building in Westwood. And that, so he's open for business. So people would come that were having a hard time during the Depression to raise cash to pay their bills. And he had the cash from the jewels to buy things. Well, as we know, the world has these wonderful cycles. And he was very smart because he bought chairs and rugs and paintings and beautiful decorative accessories. And so uh, several years later, the, the market changes. And so he's sitting very well. And my sisters and I are products of that generation because we were raised around beautiful things. I can still remember um, always having gorgeous china for breakfast every day where a lot of our friends were saving the good china for parties and whatever, but it was in our in our lifestyle that we just used everything all the time. So when you get me on the podium, you, you have to know that I'm a big advocate of what are we saving things for, for heaven's sake? Get that silver that's in the cupboard that you're waiting for the party or a special occasion. How about the two of you or um, an Easter or some kind of a family event? Just bring it out, even if it's a barbecue, for heaven's sake. So that was how our family started. And um, for whatever reason, I had that personality of wanting to work. And uh, right away, I wanted to learn about things. And our grandmother was very, very, very lucky. Uh, I thought she, she was very nice because she took me under wing and taught me about silver and about paintings and about beautiful china and crystal and rugs and whatever. So I, I've had almost my whole life of, of understanding things. And then when our family business retired after literally 70 years in Westwood, I moved to La Cienega and I had a store for 26 years. So you can see we have quite a history. Um, about eight years ago, I retired, never to work again, never to see another possession, and just to lead um, a more uh, relaxed life of service, and on and on and on. Well, it's in my blood. There's no doubt about it, because I, I'd be at a, an antique store, and I'd see something, and I'd go, my god, that's only $20. I could get $100. What, what can I say? So um, a few years ago, our, our father had remarried after our mom passed away, and she passed away. And our, her son inherited all the possessions that she brought into the family house. And word got around to our girlfriends, like some of you, that I could, because um, I had to help my stepbrother um, sell everything. And I'm back in the business again. And so word got around. And then I'd be at a dinner party or a luncheon, and somebody would come up and say, my mom's just passed, or we're getting a divorce, or um, um, I have so much, and my children don't want. I think there's many here that can identify with that. Um, we've 
we're now of a certain age, excuse me, and we're going through our cupboards and we're going to, hmm, I haven't used this in a long time. Or if we've been smart enough, we've talked to our kids and they go, no, mom, I don't want that. In my case, here I have all these beautiful, I mean, really, like all of us, beautiful silver and china and silver and crystal, and my daughter is contemporary. She's zen. She doesn't really want a whole lot of all of this. And so, okay. The other piece that I wanted to add, and it's partly why I'm here today, I've been now working at this for a few years. And I've now met families all over this city and in other cities in the United States. And the common thread is, my children don't want things. But there's another piece. There's this piece of my, the, our parents have passed on. Okay, and that's a fact of life. I mean, it just comes with the territory. So I've been working with the, the men and women who've inherited mom or our parents or their parents' things. And many of them don't live in town where the home is. So it's a, a big deal to come and work on it. But there's another piece. They don't know or care about all these beautiful, beautiful possessions. Their object is to clean out the house and get it ready for sale. Or um, in many cases, uh, we're all of a certain age. We now, some of us have grandchildren. So we're encouraging our grandchildren to take part in all these beautiful things that our generations have accumulated. And I have a new good friend next to me at lunch, two new great <laughs> new friends at lunch. And we've been talking about all these subjects. And Sandy was saying that, um, you know, we we were all big buyers in the 80s, all of us, and many of us bought things um, when the market was very strong, sort of like um, when the dollar is high and we go to buy a dress and all of a sudden that $600 dress is now 2000 kind of thing. Well, it's the same with material possessions. We're living in a very, very non-materialistic time. And any of you who have thought about selling things or donating them or whatever, um, if you bought them in the 80s, you go, oh my goodness, I paid X for that. And someone like me says, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's worth X at the minus point now. And um, what do you do? And I think that um, people like me, and there's many of me out there, so it's, I'm not just out there alone. but. I'm, I'm passionate about this. To me, this is so fun to go.